Wishio is an average-looking guy who goes to high school, likes drawing, and wants to be a painter. He, however, descends from the bloodline of the ancient order of elite samurais who used to fight against the evil of the world. According to the legends that his father, who was a lecturer at the temple, told him, 500 years ago, this earth was on the brink of getting destroyed because of a legendary monster that was on the rise and was killing everyone that came in his sight. Everyone was scared of him and ran away from the villages as soon as they heard that this monster was even remotely nearby. One of his ancestors, however, a strong samurai, used a spear, which was created in China specially for the purpose of slaying monsters, to impale this giant monster to the wall, successfully stopping the monster, but in the process, he ended up dying. Even this morning, he has a small tussle with his father, in which this absolute human of a man ended up kicking his own father in the jaw. Later on, Ushio tells his dad to shut the hell up or show him the legendary spear that he keeps talking about. They again start fighting about this, until his father gets up and starts packing his stuff. Bushio asks whether he is leaving for good, but his father tells him that he is just going on a vacation for seven days to Netflix and chill and be away from his irritating face. Hoshio's father tells him to dust the books in the shed and show them some light before going and Hoshio tells him to piss off before closing the door. Later that day, he decides to fulfill his father's wishes and goes inside of the shed to dust the books, but while carrying the giant load of books, his legs get stuck in something and he falls over. He gets up to examine the ground and is surprised to see a trapdoor right beneath him that he has never seen before because it was covered by a carpet. He grabs the handles and tries to open the door, but the door seems to be very thick and heavy, just like the woman next door. This muscle head decides to use brute strength and literally rips the bolts of the door apart somehow, but is unable to handle the weight of the door and falls inside. He gets up and cleans the dust off of him when suddenly he feels a very eerie presence behind him. He turns around slowly just to see a giant yellow-colored monster sitting near the wall. This scares the crap out of him, and then to put the icing on the top, the monster is alive as it starts talking. He asks why Ushio is staring at him, as it is creepy even for the monster. Then the monster suddenly tells Ushio that it is good that he came down, as he is currently impaled by this damned spear, and only a human can pull it out of him. The monster tells him that he has been trying to get himself out of this situation from the past 500 years, but no matter what he does, he cannot seem to get rid of the Dan's spear. He tells Ushio again to remove the spear, but Ushio asks him what he will do if he does. The monster looks him in the eye, and tells him that first he will devour Ushio, and then he will kill the rest of the people living around, and once again create this world a living hell. Ushio starts kicking the spear more inside of the monster, and the monster starts crying out of pain, as he doesn't realize why Ushio doesn't want to let him loose from the spear. The monster then tries to attack Ushio, and is able to reach him with his nails, cutting him above the forehead, but Ushio is a Jigachad, and just keeps pushing the spear even more inside of him. He then gets up, and starts going up the stairs, but the monster gets scared of losing his chance to escape, and starts calling him and saying that he didn't mean what he said, and that he just got carried away by the thought of freedom. He tells Ushio that if he pulls the spear out of him, he will do whatever he says, and he will keep this promise, as he is scared of humans. Ushio, however, looks at him and tells him that he will not let a monster like him lose in this world ever, and walks outside and proceeds to bore the entire trapdoor up, while the monster cries out to him to not do it. Ushio then proceeds to go to school as if nothing had happened. The balls on this man must be made up of steel. He meets up with two of his classmates named Ino and Naka, who both seem to like Ushio. Ino comments that Ushio seems to be lost in his own thoughts and asks him whether he was okay, even Naka comments that it is not like Ushio to think about anything ever before she asks him whether he brought the book that he borrowed from her several days back and Ushio says he hasn't. Naka tells him that she will be coming after school to his place, so he better keep the book ready, and they all go inside their classes. Even in class, Ushio can't help but think about the monster in his basement and starts drawing a picture of it before he is invited to play soccer. He has amazing reflexes and is able to win the game very easily for his team, before he decides to go back to his place. In the afternoon, Naka, alongside Ino, visits his house to get the book back, but as soon as Ushio opens the door, he spots some weird transparent flying thingies that look like the floaters that you see sometimes in your eyes. He tries to get rid of them, but to the girls it looks like Ushio has gone insane, and to bring him back to reality, Naka kicks him in the face. Excellent job, woman, now he has amnesia as well. Ushio gets up and runs towards the shed, where he starts taking the wooden planks apart and shouts at the monster, asking him what he did to his eyes as he is seeing illusions. The monster laughs at him and tells him that when Ushio opened the trapdoor, 500 years worth of demonic energy was released in the outside world, which attracted lesser demons and he can probably see them earlier only because he saw him inside of the shed. 
The monster tells him that the lesser demons will materialize soon and start killing humans left and right. He then tells Ushio that it is all his fault that his precious little friends will die, and he cannot do anything about it. But the monster promises that if he frees him, he will not kill Ushio or his friends and will get rid of every single lesser demon in the area. Not having a choice, Ushio goes down and grabs the spear with both hands. He then starts pulling the spear, and after some effort, the spear gets free of the monster's body. The monster is impressed by Ushio's pull-out game, but decides to attack him anyways. Ushio is thrown against the wall and he starts bleeding. He looks at the monster and asks him why would he do that, and the monster laughs in his face and tells him that he must be dumber than a cupboard to think that he will keep his promise to a weak little human. Ushio can't believe himself and thinks about the girls in trouble. Before he starts getting angry, an unholy aura starts generating around him. His hair also starts growing, which scares the living out of him. He curses himself for not noticing that the boy still had the legendary spear, and looks in horror as Ushio starts looking more and more like the samurai who impaled him in the first place. Ushio is still pursuing the monster even though he freaks out and runs outside, killing every lesser demon in his path. The monster runs and suddenly becomes Pikachu, shocking every demon around him to a crisp and saying sorry to Ushio and promising that he will kill every demon. Ushio looks towards the house and notices that the demons have congregated and became one huge entity. He tells the monster to go and attack the greater demon first, and that he will finish it off soon after. The monster listens to Ushio without a word and jumps in the sky using his claws to tear through the demon, before Ushio jumps and shreds the demon to pieces with the help of the spear. He lands down and his hair starts falling off, and the monster tells him that he kept his promise and killed the lesser demons, and starts to walk away, but Ushio stops his path and tells him that more demons are around, and until they have killed every single demon, he is going to stay with him. He names the monster Tora and starts walking towards his house with him, thinking that a day will come soon when he will impale the monster and seal him again. The following day, Ushio wakes up to the loud sound of Tora breaking his TV as he thought the samurai inside of it was coming to kill him. Ushio goes to school alongside Tora who is sitting on his shoulder and is invisible to the rest of the students. Ushio is forced to carry his spear with him, as he needs the spear to draw out his powers in case Tora decides to rebel. He meets up with Ino and Naka inside of the school, who claim that they both had the same scary dream last night about a bunch of monsters trying to kill them. Ushio just smiles, glad that they don't know what happened in reality. He asks them about where they were headed to, and they reply that they are going inside of the old school building to shift some books, as they want to renovate it. Ushio reminds her that the class begins soon, and she replies that she will be back before that. Ushio goes inside of the class, but some time passes by, and the girls still haven't returned. The teacher has already started teaching about Japanese history, and out of everyone in the class, Tora seems to be the most interested in knowing what happened in the last 500 years and is even taking notes. Suddenly, the ground shakes, and a very shrill noise is being emitted by Ushio's spear, that apparently only he can hear. He gets scared for the girls, and immediately grabs his spear, and rushes outside of the class. And on the staircase, he is shocked to see one of the girls that went with Naka and Ino, half turned into stone, asking for help and crying. Ushio screams at the teacher to help the girl and rushes outside. The news spreads like wildfire and a bunch of media and police arrive in front of the old school building, presuming it to be a case of kidnapping. They enter inside the school but are unable to find anything, and they come out once again, confused as to where did the girls go. Ushio asks Toro what is this all about, and he starts laughing saying he can't believe Ushio didn't feel the presence of the giant rock monster residing in the old building. Ushio grabs his hair and tells him to give more information, but Tora snaps back and scratches him on his hand, claiming that he will give him no more information. He tells Ushio that humans don't mean anything to him, and he will devour them if it comes to it. Ushio gets mad, and takes out his spear, and attacks Tora. Tora dodges and strikes back, but Ushio is able to dodge his claws and hits him in the face before impaling his hand to the ground a little bit. Tora starts crying out in pain and tells him to take it out. Ushio removes the spear and Tora tells him that he is pretty sure the culprit here is a rock eater, who lives inside of dark and musty places and waits for humans to enter his area so that it can devour them. He also claims that rock eaters are dangerous and once he saw a rock eater turn an entire group of armored samurais into stone. Ushio had enough of the conversation and decides that he needs to act now. He rushes through the police who try to stop him and enters the old building, where he slashes at the invisible barrier and immediately breaks, revealing a giant rock samurai. The samurai attacks Ushio, but he blocks it and jumps behind him, stabbing him in the chest, thinking that he killed him. But Tora starts laughing and tells him that the samurai is just a pupper, and it's not the actual monster. Suddenly, a tentacle arises from the samurai's eye and stabs Ushio, who loses his spear, and turns back to normal. 
He tries to get to the spear, but two more tentacles arise from the samurai and they bang him against the ceiling. The barrier starts closing and Toru decides to hop through the other side before telling Ushio that if he is unable to run before the barrier closes, he will die an agonizing death. Ushio looks back at Tora and asks him to help. Tora tells him not to order him to help him as he is done with him, but to his surprise, Ushio tells him to save the girls and run away. Tora looks at him in disbelief and asks him whether he has gone crazy. Why would he want to save the lives of other humans, especially when he himself is in danger? But Ushio stands his ground and pleads with Tora to save the girls. Tora ends up giving in and rushes to carry all of the girls outside the barrier and he looks back at Ushio. Ushio takes one last look at him, thanks him for saving the girls and apologizes that he didn't get to devour him. Tora has had enough and he jumps in between he barrier and stops it from closing while Tora is still turning to stone. The Rock Eater is shocked to see a monster taking the human side and uses a bunch of his tentacles to stab Tora as well, who can't do anything because he is stopping the barrier. Ushio wishes very hard for the spear to come to him and surprisingly the spear flies towards him and stabs him in the stomach where the rock formation has been completed. Suddenly, he stops changing into a stone and then the spear rushes towards Tora who gets scared, but the spear just lodges itself in the barrier, letting Tora leave. Tora gets out from between the wall and walks towards the Rock Eater and Pikachu's the crap out of him. There is a huge explosion and both Lushio and Tora launch themselves in the sky. The samurai crumbles to pieces and the actual monster appears in the form of two centipede heads. Tora tells him that this is the real monster and Ushio has to use his spit on their eyes to weaken and kill them. Ushio starts falling towards the centipedes and he spits on his spear, before stabbing it in the centipede's eyes one by one, killing the monster in an instant. He then quickly slashes at the girls who were turned to stone, which releases them from the curse, before running away with Tora in the sunset. That night Tora and Ushio are on TV, which delights Tora as he can't get enough of it, while Ushio tries to sleep. Ushio's father has finally returned from the trip, and once again he starts lecturing Ushio in the morning about their history, without knowing that the damn monster that he is talking about is literally behind him. His dad once again tells him never to try and go under the shed, and Ushio quickly changes the topic and gets up to leave for school. His dad looks at the giant spear that he is carrying and uneasily laughs about how it looks like a legendary spear, but it obviously cannot be. Ushio laughs with him saying that it obviously isn't before briskly walking out of the house. His dad follows him and looks with his jaw dropped that the trapdoor has been completely destroyed. Later that day, Ushio alongside the girls and Tora visit the art gallery, where Ushio seems to be very excited and happy, looking at all these pictures. Tora cannot really understand his excitement over paint splattered on paper, but he still sits on his shoulder and goes alongside him. They finally come to a picture, which Ushio describes as the masterpiece of the great artist Hanyu, who died after creating this picture. The girls ask why this is just the photograph of the actual painting and Ushio replies that the real painting belongs to his daughter Reiko. Tor, however, stares at the picture for some time before realizing that the person who painted this is a human demon, and this painting is cursed. The following day, as Ushio is walking to school, a senior at his school trips him and begins punching him for no apparent reason. Tora laughs and watches the fight from a distance. Suddenly, a girl walks up from behind him and tells him to let go of him, and the senior left him alone and moved. Everyone started talking among themselves, and the girl simply moved away. Ushio immediately recognized the girl as Reiko, from the painting, and calls after her. She turns around and tells him that she didn't do it for him or anything, so about any thoughts. Ushio, however, keeps pressing and asks her whether she is Reiko, the daughter of the famous painter Hanyu, and she replies that she is. She turns around the corner, and he still pursues her. A speeding truck comes through, hitting Tora, but Ushio was able to grab his spear and transform just in time to split the truck at two, and saves his own life. Reiko disappears from there, and Ushio also goes back to his house, but later goes over Naka's place and asks her about Reiko. She seems to be defensive at first, thinking that he likes her, but he tells her that he only wants her to model for a painting and nothing else, as it was his dream to draw her as one of his French girls. Naka starts telling him about Reiko and reveals that she was a transfer student last year in their school, and the boys were immediately smitten by her beauty, but she always kept to herself and never talked to anyone. Naka, however, wanted her to have friends and started talking to her, and slowly she started opening up. They become friends, but once, a guy from her class asked her out, and suddenly that very day, he died because a bunch of bricks fell on him, crushing him to death. That very day, Reiko tried to off herself inside of her own tub, but thankfully she was found by the authorities before late, and they saved her. And once when Naka tries to force her to talk, she puts her away. She tells her that she needs to stay away from her, as if she doesn't, bad things will happen to her. Just then, sharp objects fall out of Sky's ass for no reason, but Reiko jumps on Naka and protects her from dying by getting stabbed. 
She then told her to stay away from her, as she doesn't want her to get hurt because of her. That day, when he was walking back to his place, he is again stopped by the senior, who grabs him and asks him why he is nosing around Reiko and punches him in the face, which delights Tora, who starts enjoying the show as both the senior and Ushio fight with each other. Finally, Wushio the idiot stops the senior's punch with his head, as he doesn't any brain inside anyways, and tells the senior that he knows that the senior is aware of Reiko's problem, before punching the senior to the ground. They then lay down on the ground next to each other, and start talking. The senior reveals that when they were young, he and Reiko were best friends and practically inseparable. Then one day, her mother eloped with one of her dad's art students, and everything changed. The next time he saw her dad, he was frantically and demonically working on the painting of Reiko, and it looked like he was possessed. The very next day, he died, and ever since, he has been haunting Reiko, and not letting poor Reiko live her life as he is scared that a guy will take her away from him. Bushio decides that he will not back off this easily, and next day, during the folk dance, he is able to convince Reiko to dance with him, and she reluctantly agrees but slowly starts liking being normal, but suddenly, a dust devil erupts and covers both of them inside of it. Suddenly, Bushio is hit from behind, and a huge gash erupts on his back, and he starts bleeding. Suddenly, a demon comes out of the dust devil, and tells Ushio to piss off as Reiko only belongs to daddy. He tries hitting Ushio again, but this time Tora comes through, and stops the demon, telling him that no half-demon touches his human and shocks him away. The senior rushes towards Ushio and helps him up, and by the time they look around, they realize that Reiko has disappeared. They both rush towards her house and are horrified to see her on top of her house, as she jumps off the roof, telling her dad that she is coming to him. Ushio quickly throws his spear into the wall, and she gets stuck on the spear a bit, while he and the senior run to the first floor, and together, they are able to grab it. To their absolute horror, the demon is standing below, calling Reiko to him, saying that she belonged to daddy, and daddy alone. Ushio screams at her to not listen to him. He tells her that she is not alone, that people care for her. He tells her that she should chose the living over the dead, and something resonates with her, and she grabs their hand, and they all are able to pull her inside. The demon is distraught at her daughter for betraying her just like her mother did, and grabs both Reiko and the senior, and starts taking them back inside of the painting. Ushio quickly grabs his spear and launches himself at the demon, and starts to stab it, but his spear has no effect on it. Tor laughs at him and tells him that he is already in the picture world, and there he cannot kill the demon. The demon grabs Ushio as well and starts sucking him in as well. Tor laughs at Ushio and tells him to beg him for his help. Only then he will help him. But surprisingly, Ushio doesn't say anything and gets sucked in by the painting. This pisses Tor off and he launches himself on the painting and grabs Ushio's head, telling him that only he gets to devour him, but the painting is not letting go. So Tor goes inside the painting and bitch slaps the demon and takes all of them out, before telling Ushio to stab the painting. Ushio grabs his spear, and stabs the painting, but at the last moment, this stupid thought Reiko gets in the middle, and gets stabbed alongside the painting, horrifying both Ushio and the senior, but it turns out that the spear has no effect on her, as she simply slips off and the painting behind her gets destroyed. Tora claims that the spear is only effective on demons, and does not harm humans. They all see that a golden projection of Reiko's dad erupts from the painting, and it bows in front of them, before telling Reiko to live her life to the fullest and disappearing. Tora has adapted to living with Ushio, even though he still sometimes try to find places where Ushio doesn't take his spear with him, so that Tora can attack. But even when he tried attacking him in the bathroom, Ushio beat him up as he even carried the spear inside. Ushio walks to the living room and discovers a letter by his dad, which told him not to look for him. What a drama queen. He then turns on the TV, and sees an emergency announcement, telling people that one of the areas in Tokyo is unsafe to go because there might be some big wild animal nearby. According to the report, a bunch of construction workers who were trying to excavate a giant landmark were killed by an unknown animal, as there were a bunch of huge bite marks all over their bodies. The thing that is puzzling to them is that whatever animal it was it even bit through the metal of the cranes. Tora immediately is filled with unreal rage as he thinks that it must be the work of Tora, as he is the one who looks like an animal and can definitely chew through metal. He shouts Tora's name. He comes down and asks Ushio why he was making such a racket, but is surprised to see Ushio already transformed and angry. He asks him what is the matter, but Ushio straight up accuses him of killing the people in the city and attacks him. Tora dodges and screams that he has no idea what Ushio is talking about, but Ushio simply smacks the spear on his head with a lot of force, hurting him. Tora gets incredibly angry and backs off before trying to Pikachu the crap out of Ushio. Ushio, however, is able to absorb all of the lightning with the help of his spear, and Tora realizes that currently Ushio is stronger than him and jumps up in the sky, before flying away, telling Ushio that he never ate any humans for the past 500 years, but now that Ushio has already accused him for something that he never did. 
He goes into the city and is totally shocked to see so many weird things that he has never seen before. He is shocked to see the huge buildings and the cars rolling around on the road and doesn't have any idea what he should make of them. He is also shocked to see how many humans are walking on the road, but thinks that it would just make his job easier. He tries walking on the road, but is instantly hit by a truck and gets stuck into the wall. This angers him and he starts screaming at the cars driving by, but obviously no one can see him so he just uses his lightning attack and destroys the battery of every single car nearby, happy with his little revenge. Meanwhile, Wushio runs towards the city. He was walking past a street when he sees a bunch of people standing around a crime scene and he goes over to have a look at it. The police are all telling people to stay back, but one old man keeps telling the policeman that this is not some animal's doing. In fact, it is the result of demons who got released the last night. But he pulls out a book and shoves it in their faces, telling them that this is his grandfather's journal, and it is clearly written that it was a site where demons were sealed away. The policeman has had enough and he pushes the old man back who stumbles, but Ushio catches him, commenting about the rude policeman. He asks the old man whether he was fine and picks his book for him but suddenly stops as he looks at the picture of a beautiful older woman on it. The old man explains that this journal belongs to his grandfather and when he was a child, there were demons lurking around in the forest who used to devour anyone who came nearby. The villagers called everyone they can think of, samurais and warriors and even exorcists, but they never returned back alive. The villagers finally decided that they cannot stay here anymore as every other day someone from the village would get eaten by the demons. One day, however, a beautiful young woman entered their village who introduces herself as Mikado. She told the villagers to give her one chance and promised them to get rid of the demons. She entered the forest alone, but the old man's grandfather was a young boy who was full of hormones and couldn't help himself but go after the older woman who went inside the forest alone, risking his own life as well. When he reached the forest, he was shocked to see that the lady was standing in front of a bunch of monsters and forcing them back inside the boxes by using some special enchantment. The demons were screaming at her and vowing revenge, but she ended up closing them in separate boxes before using a large landmark to bury them. She then looked around and spotted the kid and walked up to him, telling him that she might not be around the next time they get released, so he should make sure that no one ever moves the keystone. Otherwise, the demons will be released and wreak havoc in this world. Hushio is speechless and looks at the old man, as he tells him that last night, the keystone was removed by the excavators and the demons have been released, now they will not stop till they have had their revenge on the person that captured them, Mikado. Hushio suddenly takes a closer look at the picture and realizes that the woman in the picture has an uncanny resemblance to Ino, and is most probably her ancestor. The old man says that if it is so, then she's in grave danger, as the demons will definitely go after her. Hushio begs the man to help him and he gets his car and drives him to the city. On the other end, Tora is doing a very bad job navigating around this modern world, as he keeps hitting glass walls everywhere, and he is unable to cope with the stench of modern perfume and can't eat other people, because everyone has something or the other on their body that is indigestible to Tora, such as a metal bracelet, ring, or earrings. He sulks around the entire city, thinking that he will never be able to eat a human ever again, when suddenly, he goes past Ino. He doesn't recognize her, but immediately stops and looks at her soft body. He realizes that she smells nice and doesn't have any earrings or piercings on her. He gets very excited as soon as he realizes that he can eat her. He prepares to jump on her, but suddenly stops because he realizes that there are other monsters around this place that are not him. He looks behind and spots a bunch of weird-looking floating heads flying towards her. They take one look at her and immediately attack her, even before Tora has the time to react. Thankfully, however, Ushio arrives just in time and throws his spear at the heads who quickly move away. He then screams at Ino to make a run for it, but she is too dazed and confused to do anything. One of the heads tries attacking her again, but Ushio simply calls his spear back, forcing the head to move away from that position. Ino quickly runs inside of the mall, while Ushio stands in front to defend her. The heads try to chase her, but Ushio simply swings his spear at them. To his surprise, however, one of the heads simply grabs his spear in between his teeth, and one of the heads uses its long hair to bind Ushio, while two more run up to him and start biting him and try to kill him. Ushio, however, is made of tough steel, and the heads are unable to kill him, so they simply toss him away at a car, injuring him before going after Inno again. Tor gets angry at the heads as Inno is his prey and tries to go after them, only to hit another glass window which enrages him, and he stops being invisible, breaking the window and getting inside of the mall. He tries to find her, but suddenly spots are falling out of the higher floor, which was destroyed by the heads. She keeps slipping, however, and starts falling towards the head who has his mouth already open, but Tor is incredible fast and grabs her before she could fall down. He takes her up on the roof of the building and tells her that she is her prey and only he will eat her. Suddenly, the heads come up on the roof as well and ask Tora who he was, but tell him that Inno was their prey, and if he comes in between, they will devour him as well. Tora simply looks at them and smiles, telling them to try their best. 
One of the heads rushes towards him, but Tora simply grabs him and smashes him into the ground, killing him instantly. The other heads are shocked at Tora's incredible strength, but tell them that they will eat the girl no matter what, and one of the heads uses his hair to bind Tora before telling the others to go after the girl as he will take care of him. Inno starts running once again, while Tora is bound by one of the heads and the others run after Inno. The head that captured Tora looks at him and mocks him for thinking that he could take on all of the heads on its own, but Tora merely laughs at him, saying that how could the heads be stupid enough to think that they ever had a chance against him? He breaks through the hair and jumps at the head, biting half of it in a single go, killing it instantly. The heads chase the girl and finally catch up to her, injuring her a bit, but Tor arrives just in time, flaunting the half-eaten head in his hand and telling them to back off and not to touch and dirty the girl up. The heads are horrified to see another of their family member dead at Tora's hands and rush to bite him. Tora simply stands there grimacing and gives an eerie smile, mocking their futile efforts, before he becomes Pikachu again and shocks the crap out of all of them, burning them to crisps and killing them in an instant. One of the heads who is still somehow alive tries to rush at Eno, so he can at least kill her and take his revenge, but before he could touch her, Lucio arrives and stabs him in the head, killing it in an instant. Tora gets incredibly sad because now he won't be able to eat the girl and tries to quickly run away, but Lucio stops him and Tora immediately gets ready for a fight. But to his surprise, Lucio looks at him and apologizes for accusing him of killing the humans in the city. A huge smile erupts on Tora's face, and he starts trash-talking Ushio about how he is a numbskull, who acts before thinking and how his entire bloodline must be stupid. They start fighting again, but Ino stops their fight and gives Tora a burger, because she heard he was hungry. Tora is completely dumbfounded at this stupid girl, as he can't believe she just offered a human-eating demon a burger. Lucio suddenly wakes up in the middle of the night, sensing something coming from the spear. He gets up just in time to dodge Tora's attack. He yells at him about what the hell does he think he is doing, and Tora casually replies that he is doing what he is supposed to do, looking for an opportunity to devour him. Bushio gets mad and grabs his spear, to maybe lightly hit Tora on the head, as he believes he must have reached some kind of compromise with him, but Tora immediately dodges his attack and slashes at his face. Tora laughs at him and tells him that he only has hatred for Bushio in his heart, he tries to attack him again, but the spear automatically starts defending Ushio as he gets up angrily, grabbing the spear and transforming, ready to fight Tora. Tora, however, quickly jumps out of the window and flies away, while Ushio is left fuming with anger. Ushio looks at himself in the morning and realizes that the claw marks still haven't gone away because he was in his human form when Tora attacked. He gets even more mad and vows that he will kill Tora the next moment he sees him, as a monster will always be a monster. Lucio goes outside for a walk, when he overhears a bunch of noise and notices a guy in black beating the crap out of two punks who were bullying a family. The man in black, however, takes out his kumes and throws it at them with the intent to kill the punks. Lucio, however, quickly jumps in between and blocks the kumes with his spear, asking the man whether he has lost his mind, as these men will die if he does that. The man looks at Lucio, and he sees the shadow of a monster on him, which angers him, and he begins attacking him. Ushio dodges his attacks but gets caught up in a rope. The man is able to trip him down and steps on top of him, ready to kill him when the spear automatically hurls itself towards the man, injuring him. The man immediately recognizes the beast's spear and calms down. He picks Ushio up and bows down to the ground immediately, saying that he was mistaken to attack a wielder of the beast's spear. Ushio tells him to get up as he has already forgiven him, and they start talking. The man introduces himself as Hugh, who has as a demon hunter, who roams around different places hunting for demons. He tells Bushio that he had a family, a wife, and a daughter, who he loved more than anything in this world, but once he had to go out for a business trip. And when he returned back at his home and called out to his wife, no one replied. He got scared, so he quickly opened the door, and suddenly a demon who looked like an animal jumped out and clawed at his face, leaving the deep scars that he carries till day. He says that he got a picture from the TV of a similar-looking demon that was spotted near an old school building, where a bunch of schoolgirls were kidnapped, and he shows Ushio a picture of Tora. Bushio realizes that the monster that the man is looking for is not Tora, because Tora was sealed away for 500 years inside his basement and was released only a couple of weeks ago, so he can't possibly have killed the man's wife and kid. He was about to tell Hugh that the monster he is looking for isn't Tora, but stops in the middle and remembers how Tora attacked him in sleep. A wave of anger rushes inside him again, and he tells the man that the demon he is looking for is indeed Tora, and you should kill him as soon as possible. Bushio leaves the place and goes back to his home, while Hugh finds where Tora is hiding and engages him in a deadly combat. Bushio goes to school after that, but seems to be very lost in his own mind and doesn't seem to be himself. Naka and Ino both notice it, but he just brushes it off before leaving the conversation altogether. After the school got over, he started walking back to his house, but notices that Naka has been following him all the way from school, but isn't approaching him or talking to him. 
Anaka the weirdo immediately runs towards him and smacks him on the head with her bag and tells Ushio to hit her back. She screams at him, saying that something has been clearly bothering him, so he should just simply clean his brain up by punching Naka, and if he doesn't do that, she will keep hitting him. She tells him that he is not a person who thinks for very long, that he is someone who is very impulsive and takes rash decision, and he should not change who he is before running away. Somehow, however, the advice resonates with Ushio, and he runs off to find where Tora and Hugh is. He finds Hugh and Tora inside of a park, where both seem to be extremely exhausted after fighting for quite some time, but clearly, Hugh has the upper hand as Tora seems to be completely drained of any energy and is lying on the floor. Just before Hugh was about to deliver the final blow, Wuxia runs and stands in front of Tora, telling Hugh to stop. Hugh seems to be confused and asks what does he think he is doing and finally, Ushio admits that he lied to him. Hugh loses his mind and punches Ushio in the face, telling him that it can't possibly be true. He has traveled all around the globe to find this monster and now he is saying that this isn't the one. Hugh tells Ushio that this has to be the one and throws his kanes at Tora, but Ushio intercepts them in the middle with his spear. He tells Hugh that Tora is not the culprit, and then compares his scar to Hugh's scar, pointing out that Hugh's face has a three-claw scar, whereas Ushio's face, which was slashed by Tora, has a four-clawed scar. Hugh again punches Ushio down, and then starts punching him relentlessly in the face while he lies there helpless. Hugh gets up again and starts using a fire spell to set his kanes ablaze to kill Tora, but once again, Ushio stands in the middle, refusing to give way. Hugh throws his kunais regardless, thinking that Ushio will dodge at the last second, but he doesn't. The kunais drive themselves deep into Ushio's body, and he launches himself forward and punches Hugh, telling him that if he kills Tora, it will be cold-blooded murder, and his dead daughter will be disappointed in him, before getting completely knocked out. When Ushio wakes up again, it finds himself on a bench. Hugh tells him that he has provided him first aid, and his injuries should heal in time. He tells Ushio that he agrees that if he killed Tora, he would have been a murderer, and thanks him for stopping him. He then says that his search for his family's killer is still going on, and their paths might cross again. And if they do, he hopes they are on the same side, and then he leaves. That day, Ushio goes back to his house and sleeps without a worry. Tora looks at him and prepares to attack, but at the last moment he changes his mind and decides to have a burger instead for now. The summer vacation has finally started and Ushio's dad has disappeared again to Netflix and chill somewhere. Now, Ushio himself has decided to go on a small summer trip to a beach, alongside Naka and Ino. He has decided to spend his time resting on the beach and playing in the water alongside two gorgeous girls. This man is Max out Riz, I swear to God. Tora seems to be pretty happy to get out of that city life and spend some time in the sea, which hasn't changed in the past 500 years, unlike everything else. He decides to go for a leisurely jog on the ocean surface and disappears from Ushio's vision, who gets worried about his disappearance. Suddenly, he notices that a kid is throwing sand all over their things, and this angers Ushio, who runs out of the water and rushes at the kid before grabbing him by the neck. Naka runs after him and tells him to leave the kid alone as he didn't do any harm. Ushio listens to her, but as soon as he leaves, the little shit uses his water pistol to give Naka a golden shower before running away. They go back inside of a house where Naka's relatives live to have some snacks, and the old uncle tells them that the kid is named Tatsu, who used to be a nice little kid, but recently his mom went to get milk and never came back, following the footsteps of his dad, which ruined his childhood, and ever since then, he has been acting out being violent and just a big pain in the butt for everyone around. Ushio again wonders where Tora is who wants to become Jesus and starts running on the water, before he suddenly stops, when he feels a sudden disturbance beneath the ocean floor. A mysterious voice asks him whether he is Tora, the ancient king of demons, who has been missing for the past 500 years. And Tora tells him to show himself before he Pikachu's the water. The voice pleads with him to stop and reveals himself as an old man, telling him that he wants his help in dealing with an insanely strong underwater demon who has been harassing everyone who comes nearby and feeds on demons and humans alike. Tora doesn't really care about anything else, but when the old demon man tells him that the demon is very strong, this excites Tora, who agrees to fight the demon for him. Suddenly, a huge snake-like monster erupts from the sea, and even Tora is shocked by how big the snake is. He should see how big my snake is, and then he will get even more shocked. Tora tries to Pikachu the snake, but it is all in vain, as the snake is slathered in oil, just like I slather my snake in oil sometimes. The snake tries to get Tora with its tail and Tora dodges, but to his surprise, the snake is extremely agile for its size and appears behind Tora before trying to eat him. Tora immediately lodges himself between his jaws and tries to stop the monster from closing its mouth, but fails as the snake decides to swallow him whole. 
At the last moment, however, the old spirit comes and grabs Tora, stopping the monster from closing its jaws, and Tora screams at him to find Oshio and bring him here, as he has the beast spear, which can kill this monster. The old spirit refuses to leave Tora, so he is forced to Pikachu the spirit out of the monster's mouth, and tells him to bring Oshio as soon as possible. Mushio, on the other hand, is walking around the beach again, when he spotted the little shit roaming around and putting sand in people's bags again. This time, Wushio runs up to him and gives him a good smack on the head, which he definitely deserves. Naka, however, stops him yet again, and tells him that the kid is just a child, and he will be fine, and runs after the kid, who was running away crying. Some time passes as Yushio is laying down on the beach, when he suddenly senses that something is wrong. He runs past the beach, when he starts hearing a mysterious voice coming from a beach shower. He stops nearby when the old spirit emerges from it and tells him that Tora is in trouble inside of the beast and is requesting assistance from it. Before he can reply, however, Inno runs up to him and tells him that Naka is in trouble. He runs back to the house where the old uncle is talking to Naka on the phone. Oshio grabs the phone from the old man and asks Naka what's wrong, who tells him that she was out on a boat with a little shithead, when suddenly, a giant snake monster swallowed both of them, and she is currently inside of the beast. Lucio tells her to stay calm as he is coming and rushes outside with his spear. He grabs a motor boat as the old spirit guides him deep into the sea, where he spots the giant snake. He picks up his spear and launches an attack on the snake, but his spear cannot pierce through the oiled-up, elastic body of the monster and he bounces back. He tries stabbing it again and again, but all in vain. He uses another slash, which hurts the monster, and it throws Ushio up in the air before swallowing it whole as well. He rushes inside the body of the snake and spots Tora, holding on to both Naka and the kid, while trying not to get eaten by another set of jaws. He stops right in front of Tora, who saved both Naka and the boy from being eaten by the beast. He thanks him for saving them, but Tora's grip loosens, and he starts to fall. Thankfully, Wishio lodges his spear inside of the beast and holds on to all of them, but Naka has lost consciousness and is about to slip away. Thankfully, Wushio was able to convince the little shit to grab Naka's hand to prevent her from falling. A problem appears, however, when Ushio loses grip of the spear and starts falling into the jaws of the beast, suddenly, the spear gets a life of its own and whizzes past them at an incredible speed, stabbing itself inside the eye of the beast. Tora flies in the air while holding the rest of them as Ushio grabs the spear before telling Tora that they are going to perform a combo. Tora starts becoming Pikachu again, while Ushio uses his spear to cut open the beast, leading them to make an escape, with all of them safe. The next day, they all wait on the platform, when Naka starts asking Ushio whether it was him who saved her, as she doesn't remember anything because she hit her head on something. Ushio tells her that she must have imagined him, and that he just found her on the beach with the boy. The little shit also comes on the station to tell them not to leave, but Ushio replies that they are just going to get some milk and are definitely going to come back. Ushio returns home, but one thought has been constantly badgering him, ever since he met that little kid on the beach. Bushio's mother died when he was really young, but he never asked about her, and neither did his dad ever tell him anything about her. He goes on to his dad, and he straight up starts asking things about his own mother. His dad seems to be avoiding the topic, which leads them to get into a small fight before he leaves to receive a phone call. As soon as he tries to check where his dad is, he realizes that he is trying to run away again. Both the Bushio and Tora run after him, and he gets away before they can catch up to him. That evening, Lucio takes Tora with him to visit the grave of his mom and states that this is the first time he is coming here and he doesn't even know whether she is buried here or whether even that was a lie that his dad crafted. They stay there for a bit before Tora tells him that he is hungry and they return to their place. Lucio sits down and starts using his massive spear as a weight to cook his cup noodles while Tora eats his sausage. In the ensuing chaos, the cup falls over and he quickly starts cleaning his spear. Suddenly, his dad enters the room notices that he has been using the spear for everyday tasks like cutting open sausages and gets mad at him before starting to worship the spear. He hands the spear back to Ushio before telling him that they will talk about his mother after they are done with dinner. After the dinner, they sit around the veranda, overlooking the rain, when his dad simply throws an envelope full of money and tells him to keep it. Ushio gets enraged by it, thinking that his dad is telling him to forget about his mother by bribing him with money and ends up punching his dad. His dad tells him that the money wasn't a bribe and it was just for him to spend. As if he wants to know the truth about his mother and whether she is alive or not, he has to go on a trip. He then wears a karat uniform before telling Ushio that he is one of the demon hunters, working for a religious cult that has been exterminating demons from the earth for thousands of years. 
Before Bushio can take this information in, he tells him that his cult leader has deemed Tora to be a demon that needs to be exterminated, so he is going to fight Tora while Bushio should leave to find the truth about his mother. Bushio is still shocked at this revelation, whereas Tora is always itching for a fight, so he agrees and they proceed to walk out into the courtyard. They both engage in a standoff while Ushio watches in despair not knowing what to do as his dad starts chanting spells to exterminate Tora. Tora seems to be on edge as well, and they both run at each other, attacking in a split second, gauging each other's strength, before Tora tries to Pikachu the old monk, and he shoots a shuriken at him. Ushio keeps screaming at them to stop like a pathetic little girl while they acknowledge each other's strength and start battling out again, hitting each other full force with the intention to kill. Bushio runs in between them and tells them to stop, but he is completely ignored as they keep fighting above him. Bushio tries to stand up but is thrown away by them, as he watches them fighting like two bloodthirsty beasts. He once again tries to run in between, but is struck by a stray attack and thrown away yet again. This time, however, he gets mad and grabs his spear before cutting his dad's staff in half and scaring the crap out of Tora before hitting him on the head from the flat side of the spear. He then hits his dad who blocked his attack but is forced to back off. Bushio tells him that he cannot let him kill Tora as he can keep him under control. His dad smiles and says that he never intended to kill him and only wanted to check whether Bushio was man enough to step in and take control of the situation, and he passed the test. He reveals that he was given the job to evaluate whether Tora is still a mindless beast who will kill anyone who comes his way, or whether Bushio has actually tamed him. If Bushio hadn't tamed him, his dad would have been forced to eliminate both of them. Suddenly, Ushio realizes that they are surrounded by a bunch of hooded figures, as his dad announces to them that he deems both Ushio and Tora not a threat, and that they can use their abilities to kill demons. The men, however, don't seem to take this news very kindly, and one of them jumps in to attack Tora. Ushio's father, however, jumps in and blocks the attack, while telling them to back off as it was his duty to evaluate the two alone. His father tells him to take the spear and Tora and find his mom, while the men start attacking his father. He thinks for a moment before standing his ground, saying that he will never leave him alone in a situation like this. They get into a big brawl in which one of the priests tries to seal Tora, but his unbelievable strength shocks the priest as even after using the strongest sealing spell, Tora is able to walk towards him before punching him away. One of the priests captures his dad in a cage of light and Ushio tries to attack the priest, but gets hit by his staff and falls back to the ground unconscious. When he wakes up, he finds both Tora and his dad looking at him and telling him that they defeated all of the other priests and that Tora didn't kill anyone. Bushio tells his dad that he can't leave him at this stage as those guys can come back for revenge, but his dad tells him to go and find his mom as he can handle these men by himself easily. The next morning, Bushio packs up and leaves on a journey with Tora to find the secrets of his mom and where she is. Bushio reaches the airport with Tora, who has never seen a plane before and is wildly excited to go near one. The concept of humans flying is unbelievable to him and he seems too eager to see how these planes work. Wushio is simply sitting on the seat, when he overhears a man talking to a girl, apologizing for the death of her father, and claiming that it was a demon that resulted in his death. The girl, however, gets mad at him and tells him that just because she is a kid, doesn't mean that she will believe anything that comes out of his stupid mouth. Apparently, her dad was a pilot, and on his last flight, his plane ended up crashing after having a near collision with another jet, which was being piloted by this man in the black suit, who knew her dad. She blames him for killing her dad because of it. This interests Bushio, who asks Tora whether he knows any demons that are found in the air. Tora replies that there is a demon called Fusu, who resides in the air and comes down to the ground, when he wants to eat humans. But if the humans are delivering themselves in the air, that means he doesn't have any need to come down. He also tells Ushio that he fought Fusumu once, and that demon is one slay bastard. He is basically made entirely of jelly, and physical attacks are mostly useless on him, even Tora's Pikachu attack doesn't do anything. The only thing that seems to work on him is huge amounts of fire. They start boarding in and like a total creep, Wushio follows the girl and sits beside her before striking up a conversation. The flight starts moving and he notices that the girl seems to be scared, so without asking he grabs her hand because everyone knows that consent is a myth. The girl seems to be taken aback, but he starts saying that even he is scared, and it's better if they are scared together. What a loser. Tora, on the other hand, seems to be having the time of his life, watching outside the window. Some time passes and the girl, whose name is Yu, ends up sleeping. The black-suited man walks up and covers her with a blanket before sitting beside Ushio and telling him that Ushio might think that he is lying, but he in fact saw the monster. Ushio claims that he was brought up in a religious household and that he believes in his story, however wacky it may sound. 
They sit down in silence when suddenly the man gets up and claims that he is feeling a weird pressure, which he felt that day when he saw that monster, and suddenly, the plane starts shaking weirdly, and as soon as they see out of the window, they spot a poorly rendered, weird-looking green snot monster engulfing the entire plane. The plane starts losing elevation at a very rapid rate when Tora walks up to him and tells him to get his spear out. Bushio tells him that the spear is in the luggage compartment, but Ushio tells him that it is not a normal spear, and if he calls it, it will appear in his hands. Bushio focuses on the spear and it rushes up through the floor into his hands. The suited man rushes towards the cockpit and busts the door open to see that there are no pilots there, so he quickly sits down and starts navigating the plane while asking for assistance from the Air Force. The Air Force, however, denies his requests as they don't see anything weird on the radar. Bushio tells Tora to get out of the plane and beat the crap out of Fusumu, but Tora claims that he is in no mood for a fight and is here just for a vacation. Bushio starts chasing Tora before poking him from behind and forcing him to go on top of the plane to fight Fusumu. Tora begins his duel against the snot monster and uses his fiery breath to push him back a little, which was enough to let the pilot gain control of the flight again. Tora tries to fight against the snot monster, but his punches are of no use and his fire is not enough to completely disintegrate the monster. Bushio runs into the cockpit and tells the pilot that they need a lot of fire to defeat this monster, but the pilot says that the Air Force are refusing to help as they can't see anything on the radar. Tora appears in front of them and tells Ushio that he will pin the monster down and during that time he needs to stab the monster through the roof and he goes away. Ushio quickly goes inside the plane and waits around for Tora's signal, when suddenly Yu walks up to him and tells him that she wants to be a part of it. What a dumb woman. Ushio looks at her and agrees to it. What a dumb man. They both get in position as Tora is somehow able to pin the monster down before giving Ushio the signal, who thrusts the weapon through the roof of the plane, stabbing the monster, critically damaging him. The monster loses composure and ends up revealing itself on the radar, which results in the Air Force being called. They confirm the presence of this monster, but tell the pilot that the monster is too close to the plane, and if they fire missiles at it, the entire plane would crash. Wushio quickly runs up into the cockpit and tells Tora to take him on top of the plane, and they both decide to deal with this monster together. They run towards the monster but are stopped when he grabs both of them in his snot-covered hands. Wushio, however, breaks through with the help of his spear, and alongside Tora is able to cut his limbs off, releasing the plane from its grasp. The Air Force decides that this is a good time to intervene, and launches a missile at the monster, killing it immediately. The problems haven't subsided yet, as the pilot informs Ushio that the back landing gears have been broken, and there is no way for a safe landing in these conditions. Ushio immediately tells Tora to go outside and lift the plane up, and he does so, ensuring a safe landing, as both of them decide to board off and go their own way. Ushio goes out in a dressing room to try on some clothes when he realizes that he seems to have lost the money that his dad gave him. If I was his dad, I would have definitely gone out for one last milk run. Tora seems to be uninterested in this and asks Ushio, Why does it matter? Whether they have money or not, but Ushio knows that this world is filled with capitalist American pigs, and he believes in socialism. They finally move outside to try and find a police station to lodge a complaint, when suddenly, a bunch of people seem to get a mysterious cut somewhere on their body. Ushio seems to be confused, but looks around to see a small whirlwind in the corner, but Tora immediately tells him to be on guard, as it is not a small dust devil, but a demon. Suddenly, a large dog-like animal attacks Ushio, whose spear moves on its own to block the attack, but the creature attacks him again, cutting him multiple times all over his body which enrages him and he transforms into his Chad self and cuts the demon's blade before slamming him on the ground and threatening to kill him. Suddenly, a voice from behind tells him to stop, and he turns around and spots a beautiful lady dressed in red spandex bent down on the floor begging him not to kill the demon and to listen them out. Tora tells him that they could have killed him already if they wanted to, and they were just testing out whether you had the beast's spear or not. They get into a train together and reach a small cottage deep inside the mountains, where they both introduce themselves as siblings, who are an ancient race of demons and have a request for him. Bushio seems to be confused, but they suddenly bow down to the ground and tell them that they want him to kill their brother Juro. He gets shocked at this statement and berates them for even thinking of killing their own blood, and that he is not some hitman that could be hired to kill demons on anyone's whims. He grabs his spear and tells Tora that they are leaving, but suddenly, one of the demons throws a severed hand in front of him, telling him that this belongs to a human from a nearby village, who was killed by their brother Juro, and if Ushio doesn't stop him, he will keep killing even more humans. The woman takes Tora outside, whereas the guy starts giving Ushio some well-needed context. 
He tells him that their race of demons have been inhabiting hills and dense forests for centuries, and have no ill feelings towards humans to begin with. They tend to just hide themselves and live in peace, but lately, humans started invading their places. They started using a strategy in which they stay in a group three, and if a human comes near their area, one of them distracts him, while the other one delivers a small cut, and the third demon rushes to heal him with their special healing potion, and this all happens within a blink of an eye. The humans aren't harmed in any way, but this scares them away from the area, making them think that there are ghosts that haunt the area. He also tells him that among their race there is a law which states that they should neither kill a human unprovoked or without any reason, but from some time now Juro has been disregarding their law completely, and is on a rampage of killing humans left and right. He looks into Ushio's eye and very seriously asks him whether he would kill Juro for them, as they can't bring themselves to harm their own brother. Just then, Bushio's ears start ringing and his spear starts acting on its own and suddenly, a wall is cut to shreds and a young emo guy stand there, calling the man his brother and telling him that he is here to say his final goodbye as he is going to go on his own from now on and kill as many humans as possible. The guy reminds Juro that killing humans is against the law, but Juro tells him that the humans started it as all they ever wanted was to live in peace uninterrupted, but it was humans who always invade their place and force them to leave their homes and find new ones every single time. But now, he wishes to change it and is going to instill so much fear in humans that they won't even think of ever expanding their area. He rips out his human skin and tells them that he is never going to assume the form of a human again, when suddenly he looks at Ushio, as he senses the power of the legendary spear coming from him and gets insanely mad, shouting at his siblings and asking whether they want him dead so badly that they will ask the help of human. Ushio, as usual, is always angry and runs at him with his spear, but Juro ends up using a single slash of his blade to mortally injure Ushio, who simply falls on the ground motionless and unbreathing. The spear flies on its own and attacks Juro, but he is able to block it in time to deliver the final blow to Ushio. When suddenly Tora throws one of his severed arms through Juro's chest, surprising him and stopping him in his tracks. Juro looks behind to see Tora who screams at him that Ushio is his food, and no one can kill him but Tora. Juro gets scared of this huge Pikachu and runs away. Tora walks up to Ushio and tells him that they should simply leave and go to Hokkaido to find his mom, but realizes that he still seems to be completely lifeless and a little dead. He shakes him and gets super angry at him for dying so easily. Suddenly, the woman named Kagari tells him that the damage dealt by a demon of their race can only be cured by a special medicine and hands it over to Tora, who uses it on Ushio, saving his life. Bushio immediately wakes up with a gasp and tells Tora that Juro has nothing but hate inside of him and he will kill any human he sees if they leave him alone. He looks over to the siblings and asks them where Juro is headed and starts running outside but he suddenly notices that Tora seems to have lost one of his arms and gets worried for him, even crafting a cast for him to try and fix his arm. They all go outside and start running towards a construction site where Juro is waiting for the new shift to begin so that he can kill all of the workers there. They reach an empty clearing and look around for Juro, when suddenly, Wushio is attacked by an angry Juro, who is furious that Kagari healed the human. Bushio dodges and both of Juro's siblings try to stop him, but he is too strong and attacks them as well, pushing them back. Wushio runs up to him and jumps up in the air to attack him, and is able to push through his spear, hitting Juro and injuring him. Juro immediately runs up a cliff and cuts the edge of the cliff, making a huge area crumble on top of Ushio and the others. Thankfully, Wushio was in his Chad form and alongside Tora is able to hold the boulder, preventing them from getting crushed. Unfortunately, however, both of the siblings end up getting stuck beneath Truck Kun, which starts leaking oil and they are unable to move. Wushio quickly screams at Tora to leave the boulder and help the siblings escape as the oil can catch fire, which will result in an explosion. At first, Tora is reluctant to help them, but after Ushio pleads with him, he decides to help them and moves over to try and lift Truck Kun off of them before it eyes case them into another world. Juro comes down to finish the job, but he notices that Ushio and Tora are helping his siblings, which changes his heart a little bit, and then Ushio spouts some moralistic bullshit, which I am not going to write down, but this ends up making Juro reconsider his choices when suddenly, the new shift workers arrive at the scene, and after having a look at Juro, think that he is some kind of an animal, and start throwing rocks at him. Juro looks around and gets furious at them, swearing to kill them all, making them all run away, but one of the workers was smoking a cigarette, which ends up lighting truck, Hans piss on fire. Kuro was about to go behind the humans when Tora screams at him to help them save his siblings, and after a moment's hesitation, Juro runs towards Tora, trying to lift truck Kun. However, truck Kun seems to be very OP and doesn't move at all, which makes Ushio scream for help. Hearing his cries for help, 
some of the construction workers end up running towards the burning wreckage and helping them lift truck Kun off of the siblings, saving them. They all overlook the explosion as Yushio thinks that Juro might have had a change of heart and starts asking him to give humans another chance, and that he will personally find them a place to live and make sure that humans stay out of it. For a moment, Juro seems to have changed, but suddenly he lunges at Ushio, trying to attack, but Ushio uses his spear to stab Juro in the heart, killing him immediately. After that unsavory encounter with Juro, Ushio was disturbed and also physically hurt, so the siblings showed him the location of a secret hot spring with healing properties that's supposed to get rid of any injuries and diseases that you might be troubled with. Both of them seem to enjoy the hot bath when suddenly Ushio overhears a girl singing in a very beautiful voice, which makes him investigate. However, she gets startled and runs away from the spring, making Ushio ashamed of himself for scaring the girl. Tora doesn't understand why any of them should be upset over it, and tells Ushio that he felt a weird vibe coming from the girl, and he thinks that the girl is not a normal human. Ushio dismisses him, saying that he is just cautious around humans. Later that day, they both go over to the town again, to grab a bus so they can leave for Hokkaido, when Ushio suddenly notices the same girl walking near the pavement, but seems to get disbalanced and almost gets ice caved by Truck Kun. But once again, Ushio comes in for his save at last and pushes her out of the way. The girl seems to have gotten unconscious and one of the ladies of a nearby store tells him that this girl's name is Saya, and she belongs to the household of the richest landlord of this town, before pointing over to a giant mansion on top of the hills. Ushio decides to put Saya on his back and starts taking her up the hill, Tora calls him a giant sissy simp because the only reason he is doing this is because he likes the girl, but like every simp in the world, Wushio has gone down a giant hole of degeneracy from which he can never recover. While carrying her up, she wakes up and apologizes for troubling him, but tells him that she was trying to find him in the town. This surprises Ushio as he is actually meeting her for the first time. She tells him that she can walk, but as Wushio puts her down, she turns around and spots Tora in front of her. She gets a little taken aback, and this surprises both Ushio and Tora as not everyone can see demons unless and until they decide to reveal themselves. She reveals that she comes from a long line of people who have worked to bridge the communication gap between humans and demons, and are trying to stop the conflict between humans and demons, as they believe that if only humans and demons could communicate, they could live more peacefully together. She tries walking, but starts stumbling again due to dizziness, which makes Ushio carry her again as he runs up the hill to her house. He enters her place and sits down in a room with her when, suddenly, her father and her grandmother enter the room and seem to be angry. He screams at her for going out of the house when she knows that she is an invalid and can't operate on her own. He also starts chastising her, telling her that she is only good for causing trouble and should simply stay locked up in the house like an animal, because that's what she deserves. This enrages Ushio, who starts talking back to her father, telling him that he is fat and ugly. The dad gets angry as well, and just when it seemed like they were going to end in a physical confrontation, Saya stops them and begs her father to give her 30 minutes to talk to Ushio, and then she won't go out again, and he agrees before leaving. Ushio is still fuming about her father and asks her how she can simply hear all that abuse, but she starts talking about some woke things about how this is all patriarchy, when Ushio tells her to shut up and to tell him why she was brought here. She replies to him that centuries ago, one of the ancestors of her father ended up capturing a god in their house and binding her in a room with a bunch of spells. The god is famed for being a very prosperous charm as whoever has the blessing of this god will have all the riches they can want, so their ancestors simply imprisoned the god to keep getting her blessings. Now that's what I call a pro-gamer move. Wushiva starts following her as she tells him that her bloodline from her mother's side has been a very weak line of women with a lot of ailments, making them fragile. When she was a child and her mom was on her deathbed, she explained to her that she is supposed to keep communicating with the goddess so she didn't grow tired or sad. She then opens a room and they all enter inside to find it covered with charms and spells and behind it, a Chinese-looking girl sitting on the floor. Saya walks ahead and sits beside the Chinese girl who asks her whether this is the boy with a beast spear. She then looks over to Tora and greets him, as she seems to know about him. She is confused, however, as to why he is traveling alongside a human, when he is supposed to be the king of demons, who everyone is scared of. Tora tells her that it is a long story and he isn't going to waste his time talking to her. He asks her what she wants from them. She tells them that she wants them to destroy the barrier that is keeping her in place. She tells Ushio that this barrier is made up of extremely strong enchantments, and the only way to break it is by using the beast's spear, which is attached to a user that it recognizes. Tora looks at her and asks her whether she knows what will happen if the barrier breaks, and she replies that she does. Both Bushio and Saya seem confused, so Tora elaborates by saying that once the barrier is broken, 
A huge amount of energy will be released all at once, which will most probably destroy the guy for good. Saya is shocked by this news and tells them that she had no idea about it. The Chinese girl tells her that this is good for the both of them, but Saya refuses to agree to this. Suddenly, Saya's dad enters the room, realizing what they were doing, and immediately attacks Oshio, who blocks the attack with a spear. The man attacks him again, but this time he simply moves out of way before spanking him, which is very kinky. Bashio goes on the offensive now while the man tries to defend against his attacks. Tor decides to try and Pikachu the barrier, but it doesn't work. The Chinese girl begs Ushio once again to destroy the barrier, and this time Ushio pushes the man away before running towards the barrier. Surprisingly, however, he is stopped when Saya stands in front of him and tells him that she cannot let him destroy the barrier, as it will kill the Chinese girl. Before Ushio can decide what to do, the bodyguards of the household rush Ushio and grab him. While the man tries to kill him using his sword, Batora comes to the rescue, snapping the sword in half before pushing himself through the barrier, while trying to put a layer of electricity around him to try and protect him from the barrier. He gets halfway inside the barrier and screams at Ushio to destroy it while he protects the Chinese girl, but Ushio, the giant simp, tells him that this is Sei's decision. Tora tells him to become a white knight later as he is getting hurt, but Ushio is steadfast and tells him that only Sei can make a decision. Sei is an even bigger dumbass, who keeps thinking about what to do even though Tora already told her that he would protect the Chinese girl from the explosion. Finally, Ushio decides to break the seal and slices the charm in half, setting the god free. However, as soon as he does that, a huge explosion erupts, but Tora protects the god, and Ushio protects Saya. When the dust settles, they see that the entire house has been demolished, and that the god has safely ascended back to the heavens where she belongs. Afterwards, Ushio and Tora again leave to continue their journey after having one last chat with Saya, who tells Ushio that she will be strong from now on, and will take her destiny in her hands. You can't be very strong with anemia and heart problems, so I think she's talking crap. Oshio and Tora decide to stay with the doggy siblings for another night, as they miss their bus because of Saya, and at night, after having dinner, Ushio goes outside near the pond to chill out, but while staring at the calm black water, it suddenly starts vibrating and a vision appears inside of the water, in which he sees Naka, holding a mirror, and crying out Ino's name again and again with a horrified look. Before Ushio could even register what was going on, the vision disappeared from the surface of the pond, leaving him completely bewildered. He rushes inside the room, totally shaken, and asks Tora if he knows about any mirror demons before telling him what he just saw. Tora says that he doesn't have any idea about this, but the Dobby siblings tell him that they know a demon who is an expert in mirrors, and they can take him up to the demon. Ushio immediately agrees, and even Tora follows soon as they climb through a dangerous mountain before reaching a dark cave. The siblings call upon the demon and identify themselves, claiming that they have come here in peace. Soon, a shiny thing emerges from the cave, which turns out to be a demon that literally looks like a mirror. He greets the siblings and starts talking to them when suddenly, he starts trembling and comments that something seems to be amiss. He feels an overwhelming power near him, and then he suddenly notices Ushio standing behind them with a beast spear, which scares the demon so much that he starts running back into the cave. The siblings try to tell him that Lucio doesn't kill indiscriminately and only kills demons who create problems, but the mirror boy is a loser, isn't ready to hear them out, and keeps running inside when he is suddenly grabbed by Tora, whom he immediately recognizes and gets scared even more. Tora tells him that he is not here to waste time and threatens him to tell them everything he knows, so finally the demon obliges and tells them he will try to show them what happened on an incognito tab. His body becomes a TV, and they watch as both Maka and Ino come back from school with a bunch of food and snacks, as they want to have a sleepover. They have a lot of fun, but after a while sit down to have a chat, when suddenly, an antique mirror that Ino's dad bought recently starts vibrating, and before they can react, a giant demon erupts from it aiming to capture Naka, but Ino pushes her out of the way and gets caught instead by the demon, who takes her inside the mirror. Bushio gets extremely angry and converts into his chat avatar before telling the mirror to transport them to Ino's house. The mirror gets scared and obliges, but tells them that they can't stay inside the mirror for long, otherwise, they will get trapped forever. After hearing that, they jump inside his body and come out of the other end into Ino's place, where they find Naka still crying. They immediately ask a bewildered Naka where the mirror is, and as soon as she tells them, they jump inside the mirror, but the idiot Naka also jumps in alongside them like a total third-wheeler. They travel inside the belly of the beast, where they finally spot the monster in the midst of some beautiful clouds. He still has Ino with him, which enrages both Tora and Ushio, as they rush towards him at full speed. The monster throws a bunch of creepy-looking leeches at them, that get stuck to Tora's body, 
but he uses his strength to get them off of him before flying towards the monster. They rush through the monster and with a single attack, Yuzio slices the monster in half killing it immediately before grabbing Ino and rushing out of the mirror. The strain of the adventure knocked both Naka and Ino out, who were then carried by Tora and Ushio, who laid them down on the floor before leaving the scene. For mercy, Oshio and Tora say their final goodbyes to the doggy siblings before they leave their place to go to the bus stop. Oshio tells Tora to simply carry him and leap from this bus stop to the next one, but Tora wants to travel in a bus again as he has never really done it before. They get into the bus and Tora is beyond himself with happiness, playing around and having fun, but within five minutes he gets bored and starts annoying Oshio by telling him to make the bus go fast, but suddenly he falls completely quiet. Ushio looks at him and asks him whether anything is wrong, but Tora simply tells him to concentrate, and suddenly, the spears start ringing very wildly. Tora tells him that he can feel a bunch of demons in this area, and all of them seem to have an agenda against him, and are extremely angry. Ushio gets surprised and asks Tora why they would hate him, but Tora replies that he has killed several monsters, and maybe that's why they are mad. The bus keeps moving and Tora senses even more demons, and all of them are brimming with hate for Ushio. Suddenly, a flying squirrel-like demon breaks through the front glass of the bus and hits the driver in the head, killing him immediately, before making a beeline for Oshio, who immediately takes out his spear and dodges the attack. The bus gets out of control and hits the side rail, before starting to fall off the cliff. The demon comes in again with an attack, but this time, Oshio slices the demon in half and lands on the ground above alongside Tor as he looks down below at how bus con eyes cage so many people at once. Before they can figure out what's going on, hundreds of monsters start coming out from the side of the road, cornering both Loshio and Tora. They start fighting their way through the monsters, killing them one at a time, but still, they are way too much for them to handle. Tora seems to be completely fired up and tells Ushio that he hasn't fought against this many opponents in a long while. Ushio, however, is scared that the battle will result in more human casualties, so he tells Tora that they need to take the battle into the forests. They rush inside the dense vegetation and keep running when suddenly, a demon appears from beneath the ground and grabs Ushio's leg, telling him that he will kill both him and his mother. Suddenly, hundreds of monsters appear again around them and start attacking him. Tora tries to save him but is stopped by a giant white ape-looking idiot monster. He makes fun of Tora for trying to save a human before calling him pathetic. Just when things seem like they were going south, the spear gets a life of its own and cuts through the demons before dragging Ushio outside of the jungle and only stopping once they were near a lake. He is still super confused as to what just happened, when the spidey senses of his spear start tingling again and he gets defensive again. He shouts at the monster to reveal itself, when a meek voice calls out to him for mercy, telling him that he means no harm. Ushio tells him to reveal himself and the monster comes out of the water. This monster is a kappa, who is usually deemed harmless and likes playing pranks on humans. The monster walks towards the injured Ushio as he asks kappa, why are the monsters trying to kill him? And is this because he killed their brethren? Kappa looks surprised to know that Ushio has no idea why the monsters are behind him, and tells him that the monsters are behind him because of his mother. Kappa reveals that Ushio is famous among all of the demons in Japan, as he is the son of the woman who saved the most dangerous monster of all time. Kappa tells him that thousands of years ago, a young girl came on a ship from China, but the image of the young girl was merely a facade as her true identity was that of a demon called Hakuman. He was the strongest and the most ancient demon of them all, and he was so insanely strong that no one could even lay a finger on him. He deemed that every other demon apart from him was inferior and didn't deserve to live, and he started killing all Because of this, all of the demons came together and declared an all-out war against Hakuman, but it was of no use as he was too strong and killed a bunch of the monsters. Later, Tora also joined the battle from their side, and after a lot of struggle, they were finally able to push Hakuman back who swore that he would come back, more powerful than ever, and kill every single one of them. He starts applying lube on Oshio's body for some reason, and continues that the demons then wanted to give chase and finish him off while he was in a weakened state, but Tora had no such interest and returned to his area where later he fought against an ancestor of Ushio and got pinned to the wall. The other demons who gave chase to Hakuman were finally able to locate him and try their very best to kill him by attacking all at once, but they were unable to even lay a scratch on the demon because he was being protected by a very strong barrier, which was created by Ushio's mother. That is the reason why they weren't able to kill the evil Hakuman, and now harbored deep hatred towards Ushio and his mother. Suddenly, 
Wishier senses a bunch of demons coming towards him and gets on edge again, but Kappa tells him to quickly run towards the village as the demons won't enter that area. He thanks Kappa for the unwarranted massage and says that he will return for his happy ending before running away in the distance. He runs inside of the forest once again and is immediately surrounded by a bunch of demons. He tries to defend himself but the demons but he cannot fight against such an overwhelming army alone. Suddenly, he hears a scream and notices an old guy inside of the forest, so he quickly grabs him, putting him on his back before running away immediately. He asks the old man for the directions of the village and the old guy points him in direction through the forest, where he keeps running to suddenly see a bunch of small lights in the distance, relieved that safety is finally in sight. Oshio runs with the old man and finally reaches the village where he is taken to the shop of an old woman who gives him a bunch of milk and some food to eat, as he looks famished. Oshio eats happily, while talking to the old man, who explains that he was shocked to see so many monsters, while the old lady comments that it is even hard to imagine that these monsters exist today. The old man starts asking Ushio questions about him as he seems to be fascinated by his powers. Ushio pauses for a bit, thinking about the best way to introduce the story, without sounding like a total lunatic, and tells him since the start about how he took the spear out of Torah, and ever since that day, he has been fighting against these demons on stop. The old man looks at him with an understanding gaze when Ushio gives him a cream bun, telling him that he hasn't eaten anything. After talking to him for some time more, he decides to leave and while outside, suddenly his spear starts ringing wildly and he realizes that there are demons around. He screams at the old man to quickly go inside of the house, but before he could do so, hundreds of demons appear out of nowhere, surrounding him completely. He defends the old man, a giant demon grabs him from behind, but he is able to break free by slashing through him before deciding to run as fast as possible, while screaming at the people roaming outside to go inside their houses and protect themselves. One of the giant demon snakes tries to kill a woman and her child, but thankfully, Wushio is able to slice through the demon and continue his marathon. He finally reaches an abandoned area and turns around to face his demons literally. A giant dinosaur demon attacks him, but Ushio is able to block its attack before killing it in a single slash. The demons gang up on him and gangbang him from multiple directions, hurting him badly, to the point where he is having trouble simply standing up. He falls over to the ground and looks up to see a monster about to attack him, but he is so powerless that he simply accepts his death. At the last moment, however, the doggy siblings come to the rescue, slashing through the nearby demons before standing in front of him. Bushio notices that they seem to be already hurt by fighting the demons and asks them to run away, but they tell him that they owe him their lives and won't leave his side. They rush towards the monsters again, killing a bunch of them all at once, but suddenly a massive demon arrives on the scene and hits Kagari with its club, hurting her. The giant unicorn monster threatens the sibling to stop defending Ushio, if they know what's best for them, and sends a bunch of small worm-like monsters on Ushio, but he is able to slash through them all with a bit of reserved courage. They stand back to back while Kagari asks Ushio where Tor is, to which he replies that he must have sided with the demons and left him for dead. Kegari, however, refuses to believe this and clings on to the hope that he will show himself saving them all. The unicorn monster breaks through the brother's blade and hurts him, before trying to strike a deal with the doggy siblings, telling them that if they kill Ushio for him, he will let them live. Hushio tells them to take the offer, as he is not going to make it out of this alive anyway. But the siblings tell him once again that they will die before they leave his side, and they run at the army of the demons on one last suicide charge, when suddenly, Lightning strikes and every demon around an area is instantly killed, and to everyone's surprise, Tor emerges and grabs all three of them, before telling the unicorn monster that Mushio is his food and no one else can touch him, before leaping in the air and landing somewhere deep in the forest. Mushio gets off and turns around to thank Tora, but suddenly both Tora and the doggy siblings disappear in the mist, as the night mysteriously turns into a day, and when he turns around, he spots a massive mansion in front of him that calls his name. The doors open on their own as the mysterious voice tells him to march inside. He is shocked to see such a big mansion and a little scared as well, but he puts on his big boy's shoes and keeps walking until he enters a room to see the Chinese girl sitting alongside a weird old dude with a limp nose who might need some performance enhancement pills. He walks towards the Chinese girl, surprised to see her here, and asks what is going on. It is revealed that the old guy here is the leader of the monsters in this area and he wants to strike a deal with Ushio. He tells him the same story about why the monsters are trying to kill him because a woman protects the legendary monster Hakuman, who is a silver-colored nine-tailed beast. He says, however, that humans cannot live for that long, which means that the protection of Hakuman has been generationally given to the woman in the bloodline and currently is being handled by Ushio's mother. He says, however, that after talking to Ushio, he realized that humans are not completely irrational 
and that there must be a reason why this woman is defending a monster. Bashio interrupts, saying that this is the first time they are talking, but the old guy reveals that the old villager he saved from the forest was only him, disguised to see Oshio's true nature. He claims that they want to know the reason why his mother is protecting the monster, and will let him go see her, but he needs to extract information for them. Bushio agrees to it, and he sends a command to all of the demons, saying that Bushio is off-limits now and shouldn't be attacked until further order, but this causes turmoil amongst the monsters. They all go outside to see Tora and the Dobby siblings facing off against the entire demon army. The old man tells the demons that he has given orders which must be followed, but the unicorn monster says that he cannot follow these orders as Tora and Ushio have killed a bunch of their brethren. Tora makes fun of the unicorn guy before being challenged to a one versus one battle. Tora excitedly agrees and the old man sets the terms, stating that if Tora wins they are going to follow orders and not attack the boy, but if he loses they can disobey his orders. What a crappy leader, he definitely needs some enhancement pills. The battle starts and the unicorn immediately crushes Tora in the ground before repeatedly battering him with his club and then sends a bunch of hand snakes at him which bite his entire body. Bushio starts getting worried as Tora is drawn closer to the monster before he uses his horns to stab Tora through the stomach. Suddenly, however, the tides of the battle turn as Tora grabs his club and chastises him for being weak, then blames it on a human before becoming a Chorizid and using his Flammenwerfer to completely burn the unicorn and then immediately jumps up in the sky and Pikachu's the shit out of the monster, turning him black. He is not done though as he then starts battering the monster, punching him again and again before delivering one final punch, defeating the monster. The duel ends as the old guy tells the monsters not to attack Ushio anymore and both he and Tora leave into the forest to continue their journey of finding Ushio's mom. The next day, they finally reach Hokkaido and start walking towards the town, when they are suddenly covered in mist and seem to have lost the direction they were supposed to walk in. Tora blames it on Ushio, saying that he had one job, which is totally fair to be honest. While walking, however, they suddenly feel the presence of some demons and a weird, creepy-looking spider demon attacks Ushio. He is able to block the attack, but before he could do anything else, a mysterious girl appears out of his ass and uses her comms to kill the monster in a single hit. Now that's what I call women power. The girl looks at him and tells him that it was one of the monsters set free by Hakuman before asking whether he is named Ushio. She looks at him and scoffs at him for being a child, saying that she can't believe the beast's spear is being handled by a worthless child. Ushio tries to say that he isn't a child, but he gets bitch slapped mid-sentence, and the woman starts telling him, that she belongs to the secret society that kills these demons, and she has been trained since she was a child to be the successor to the beast spear. Only to be stopped in her tracks because of Ushio. She looks at Ushio and tells him to hand over the spear because he is not fit enough to wield it. Ushio seems shaken by this, but she starts unloading a barrage of insults at him, making him feel small and weak. She told him that it was his fault that the people got ice cave by Bus Khan, and it was his fault that Juro died and everything that has happened to him, and the people around him is purely because of him being unable to draw the full power of his spear, failing at every turn. This truly hollows Ushio out, who starts thinking about the past and how he has failed so many people. The girl moves her hand and grabs Ushio's spear. Ushio doesn't even try to stop her and lets her have his spear, after which she claims that now that she has the spear, she will be unstoppable and kill every single demon working under Hakuman, before leaving the scene into the mist and telling Ushio to go back home. Ushio simply starts brooding, but for Tora is the best day of his life. He has been waiting for Ushio to be without his spear so he can kill him and finally he doesn't have his spear. He jumps at him, but then stops because Ushio is in a completely broody mood and starts trying to cheer him up. Suddenly, they notice a bunch of creepy leech monsters flying above them, but instead of trying to attack, they simply move towards the girl who ran away with the spear. Ushio looks at the demons, gets a bit worried for the girl, and decides to go after her. The spear seems to have rejected the girl, and she is trapped in the arms of the monster, completely unable to move. Just as the monster was about to kill her, Ushio ran behind her and grabbed his spear before attacking the monster and making it drop the girl. The girl is shocked to see the Chad version of Ushio with long hair, and seems to like what she sees. Ushio grabs the spear and rushes towards the demon at full speed, slicing through all of its tentacles before trying to end the fight, but is stopped when the monster hits him and throws him back. Ushio gets up again and jumps at the monster, but is stopped mid-track, when the monster uses its leech monsters to grab the poor girl laughing in Ushio's face, claiming that he has learned that these tactics are very efficient against humans. Ushio looks behind and jumps in the air before throwing his spear at the girl, shocking even the monster, as he didn't expect him to be so ruthless. 
The spear sets the girl free, but the monster grabs Ushio and starts squeezing him to death. Toro arrives at the last moment, however, and jumps at the monster with amazing anger, and tears his arms off before biting the monster in the face, freeing Ushio. He quickly calls for his spear and rushes at the monster, slashing it in half, killing it immediately. He grabs the girl's comb from the ground and hands it back over to him, showing her the comb that belongs to her mother. He looks at the girl, and asks her whether he could keep the spear for a bit longer till he finds his mother and the girl, like a classic sundier, tells him that she isn't impressed, and will let him keep the spear for just a bit longer, and warns him that there are three other people like her, who were trained to be the successor of the beast spear, and might come for him. Bushio thanks her, and then finally finds his way into a restaurant where he has a hearty breakfast alongside Tora, and finally comes outside to get a bus and try to find his mother. While outside, he starts thinking about whether he is good enough for the spear, but then Tora starts making fun of him, and they have some friendly banter when he trips and hits his head on a motorcycle. How did he not hear a motorcycle just come up behind him? Helen Keller alert. He looks behind him to see a dashing dude on a pretty looking motorcycle. The dude says some weird foreshadowy things, but Ushio is too engrossed, acting like he just snorted a bunch of crack and doesn't really pay attention before the dude asks him whether he would like to ride him. I mean, whether he would like to ride his bike. Ushio looks at him, but feels weird so refuses before going to the bus stop to catch the next bus. On the way, however, Tora feels a weird gaze looking at him and turns around to see the dude staring at him from afar. He gets mad at this and rushes back, leaving Ushio and confronts the stranger, asking him whether he is one of the people who are after the beast's spear. Ushio starts calling Tora back, saying that he will leave without him, but Tora pays no attention to him. The guide introduces himself as Akiba, who is one of the chosen successors for the spear, but claims that he is more interested in Tora than the spear. It doesn't matter to Tora, however, as he simply rushes at Akiba, attacking him. Both of them get into a brawl and seem to be equally matched as Akiba tries to gain the upper hand by hitting Tora again and again with his staff. Tora tries to Pikachu Akiba, but fails as his staff is made up of some weird metal, which can control electricity, I guess, and he redirects it back to Tora. Tora decides to become Chorized this time, but Akiba simply dodges the attack and hits him on the head before getting a spike out his ass and using it to pin his arms on the wall. This hurts Tora as he tries to get out of it, but fails while Akiba explains that the metal is specially made to seal demon powers and Tora cannot escape it. He looks at Tora and asks him why he's with Ushio. He claims that Tora is supposed to be a monster who was born 2,000 years ago in China, can breathe fire and control electricity, is one of the physically strongest demons alive and loves terrorizing humans, so why is he following the commands of a human now, becoming his pet? Tora tells him to shut up and snaps at him, but Akiba blocks his attack and jumps back before trying to make Tora his personal Jesus. He claims that they have been following Tora's movements ever since he escaped the basement, but have been shocked to see him saving humans and demons alike. Tora starts laughing and claims that he simply stays with Oshio, without killing him because he doesn't get bored when he is with him. To Akiba's horror, Tora starts ripping his hands and feet from his body and jumps at him for an attack. He dodges the attack but then Tora decides to show how creepy he can be, and becomes a goddamn spider, chasing Akiba around, who tries to come in for a final hit, but is headbutted by Tora, defeating him immediately. Tora then joins his limbs back to his body and spares Akiba's life, telling him not to look at him or Ushio again, before deciding to follow Ushio. Ushio, on the other hand, is inside a bus, which got possessed by some leech demons who are now controlling the bus as it goes out of control. It seems like Buscon is going to rack up a good body count this season. Ushio quickly gets up from his seat and rushes towards the driver only to find him completely swarmed by the leech monsters. He uses his spear to slice the driver free, but this just results in the entire bus being in the sole control of these monsters. The bus starts swerving into the guardrail, so Ushio breaks through one of the windows, considering jumping out to save himself, but the bus is going too fast and he can't simply leave all of these people inside. Buscon immediately starts ice king a bunch of cars into another world, while he stands there helpless, unable to think of a way to save all the people, when suddenly he hears the voice of Akiba from outside calling his name, and he sticks his head out of the window to find Tora and Akiba following them closely. Tora tells Ushio to simply jump out of the vehicle, but Ushio refuses, saying that there are a lot of people in here. Akiba and Tora hatch a plan and he tells Ushio to grab all the passengers from their seats and make them stand in the center. He turns around and screams at everyone to get up from their seats, and they all assemble in the center. When the leech monsters erupt again, and get stuck to Ushio, pinning him down so that he is unable to use his spear. Meanwhile, Akiba slashes through the backside of the bus, 
before using it to slash the front end as well, and then he signals Tor to take over, who uses his energy to blast all of the passengers except Ushio out of the bus. A bunch of leeches get stuck to Akiba, but he is able to use his special technique to create an energy blanket for them, and all the passengers fall onto it, without even a scratch. The problem, however, is that the bus is still moving towards the passengers on the road as Ushio is pinned down and unable to hit the brake. Akiba starts panicking, but Tora tells him to chill out, as he trusts Ushio. Suddenly, Ushio becomes a chad and slashes through the entire bus before stabbing his spear in Bus Kun's heart and using it to stop the bus just before it can hit the passengers. He gets off the bus and seems to be happy that everyone is fine, when he notices that some of the passengers have some injuries which saddens him, as he runs away like a little girl, blaming himself for their injuries. Akiba and Tora both go after him and Tora explains that Akiba is another one of the successors for the spear and Akiba tells him to wipe that stupid look off of his face as he is going to drop him where he needs to go. After saying this, Ushio gets on the bike, and they all leave for their destination. On the way, however, they get followed by a bunch of bikers in black overalls and are forced to pull over. Ushio asks Akiba whether he knows these people and he replies that these are all the people who failed to be chosen as the potential candidates for wielding the spear. One of the girls removes her helmet, introducing herself as Jun, and tells Akiba that her brother is still missing. Ushio seems confused, so Akiba tells him that Jun's older brother is one of the potential successors for the spear and is the best of all four of them. His name is Satoru and he has mastered both the spiritual and the martial arts, making him stronger than any of the other candidates. Jun claims that her brother started acting weirdly ever since he heard the news of the Beast Spear, and has disappeared completely recently, with no contact. Suddenly, Tora feels someone coming this way, whom he claims to be a pretty strong human. Suddenly, a purple monster comes out of the ground straight at Ushio, who blocks the attack with his spear. As the dust settles, a man with yellow hair and an overflowing white robe emerges, who seems to be controlling the demon. He introduces himself as Satoru, the real successor of the Beast Spear, and sends his monster to attack Ushio again. Ushio jumps in for an attack as well, but he gets deep-throated immediately by the monster, who starts sucking him off. Akiba tells Satoru to stop before getting out his staff and attacking him. But Satoru is very strong and very quick, as he immediately blocks his attack and knees him in the stomach. The other bikers quickly decide to attack Satoru, even though Akiba tells them they are no match, and are immediately deep-throated by the same monster. Ushio feels totally helpless, as he sees the other guys on the brink of death, but as usual, MVP Tora arrives for the save and uses a single slash to set him free. Ushio quickly transforms into his chat form and rushes at the monster, slashing through it and setting the other guys free from its grip. He then sets his sights on Satoru himself, but Jun comes to his defense and stands in front of her brother, telling them to chill out. Satoru, however, is a misogynist and slaps her sister for speaking out of turn and for being a woman before something happens to him, and he starts losing control of himself and seems to be in immense pain. He tells them that he will deal with Oshio soon and disappears into the forest, Tora looks at them and tells them that Satoru is definitely infested by those leech monsters, and they seem to have taken control of his brain. This prompts Ushio to ask Tora, but there is any way of removing the monsters from his head, but Tora tells him that he couldn't care less for any other human. They all start moving again, and Ushio stops at a gas station and rushes inside the washroom before staring at the mirror like some drug-addled teen, and starting screaming for the mirror monster that he met with the doggy siblings. The monster appears and asks Ushio what he wants and Ushio explains the situation. Tor threatens him in a lighthearted manner, which scares the living daylights out of the mirror boy. And he quickly connects them with the leader of the monsters, who tells Ushio that the only way to get rid of them is to become an apparition and go inside him to kill them all. He can do that with the help of the spear, but there is no knowing whether he will be able to return to his normal form or not. After that, they all move on the road and establish a camp nearby, sitting by the campfire. Akiba tells Ushio that when they were young, Jun was once attacked by a tree monster and Satoru, even though he was scared, killed the monster with a single punch, but instead of thanking Satoru, Jun got scared of him and was never able to thank him. Ushio is like cool story but who asked when suddenly a black hole opens in the air and a bunch of bug monsters appear from inside alongside Akiba, who attacks both Ushio and Tora with some magic chains which bind Tora and disarm Ushio. He sends his bug monsters who attack Ushio, while Jun tries to appeal to Satoru's humanity again, but he punches her aside. Jun, however, is a tough girl and grabs him again, telling him that she won't leave him, 
which gives Ushio and Tora enough time to break through the binds and Ushio slices the monsters up, while Tora Pikachus them to oblivion. Satoru starts going crazy and pulls a knife out of his ass. He was about to stab his sister, when Ushio threw his spear at him, flinging the knife out of his hands. Satoru slowly regains consciousness and is horrified to see what he's about to do. He backs off the edge of the road before realizing that there is no way out of this nightmare and jumping off the road into the valley. Ushio rushes to the side of the road and throws his spear again just in time to pin him against the cliffside. He is then picked up by the rest, but seems to be in an unconscious state. They all surround the unconscious Satoru while Jun cries over him as if he were dead. Shio Lady is just unconscious. Ushio, however, is a simp as we already know, and starts telling Akiba that he's going inside Sakura's body and will definitely get rid of the monster inside of him. Akiba tries to stop him, telling him that he might never be able to return from this battle, but Ushio is thinking from the wrong head right now and doesn't care about all that. Akiba gets mad and grabs his staff, telling Ushio that he will beat him up if he tries to go inside and goes on to attack Ushio, but stops at the last moment after seeing Ushio standing defiantly. He gets pissed off and then leaves Ushio to do whatever the hell he wants to do. Ushio peeks inside of the bike's mirror and calls upon the mirror monster again who warns him again that he will lose his humanity if he goes inside another person's body, but Ushio is fine with that. As a token of goodwill, the mirror monster sends another small furry monster named Izuna to help Ushio out when he is inside of the body and to act as a guide. The monster doesn't seem to like humans very well, but one encounter with Tora scares him straight. Bushio tells Tora that he is sorry if he loses his humanity as Tora wanted to eat him, but Tora claims that he will go inside with him and eat him if he starts changing into something inhuman. The three of them rush towards the lying body of Satoru and jump inside, while Ushio tells Jem to grab Satoru's body as he might start moving. They all go inside of his body where everything is dark at first, but then he opens his eyes to see the inside of a human's body, which is very jarring for him to see nonetheless. Izuna tells them to follow him closely and not get lost before they realize that a horde of monsters is coming towards them. Ushio is determined, however, and rushes throughout the monster alongside Tora, totally decimating all of them. They keep running and finally Izuna shows them where the heart is when suddenly, the blood vessels inside the corrupted body grab Izuna, and soon both Tora and Ushio are also captured. Tora, tired of all this, decides to Pikachu his way out of this problem, even though Izuna tells him not to, as this might damage Satoru's body. But it's too late, as Tora uses the attack, making Satoru thrash around. Ushio tells Tora not to use the attack again, while his spear automatically rushes to the monster and stabs him, which leads him to drop all three of them. Ushio then rushes towards it and forces the monster outside of his body, but this puts immense strain on his body, and he starts losing control over himself. Tora seems to be scared for Ushio, but thankfully, Ushio is able to get a hold of himself and runs ahead, telling them not to waste time. They start running up the spinal cord when they see another huge cord of flying creepy leech creatures. He cuts through a bunch of them, ends up getting caught by them, and when all seems lost, the power of love prevails as Jun cries over his brother's body, which apparently is the greatest power of all time. Now this show is getting weird. So anyway, that weakens the demon inside the body a little bit, giving Ushio the chance to escape the monsters before he starts chopping up more of them for a stir-fried dish later. He keeps running when suddenly he stops mid-track as black things start coming out of his body as the beast spear tries to take control while Izuna and Tora both watch him. Thankfully, however, he is able to stay in control and starts running towards the brain when suddenly the boss monster comes down attacking them. Ushio gets ready for the final fight as both he and the boss man engage in a deathly melee. They both start attacking each other with incredible intensity, and soon Ushio realizes that this monster is not as weak and might cause them some trouble. The monster decides to try and intimidate Ushio and shows him how Hakuman looks, and just his unbelievably terrifying aura was scary enough that he kneels down and hides his face, while the monster tries to take advantage of this and attacks Ushio while he isn't looking. Thankfully, however, he is saved by the intervention of Izuna, who jumped in between tanking the blow and protecting Ushio, before he fell to the ground. Ushio grabs Izuna and falls back, putting him on the ground. But the monster pushes forward and tries to attack him. Ushio, however, blocks his attack and is now very mad. He starts forcing the monster back with a series of attacks, but Yuna's body is reaching its limits. He stands there panting, but Tora comes beside him and tells him that he has a plan, he tells Bushio that they need to lure the monster out near Satoru's eye, where Jun can use her love to kill the monster. Yes, this show really got weird. They run away from the monster, pretending to be scared, who follows them reaching near the eye, 
when suddenly, they turn around ready to face him. The monster realizes what's happening and tries to run away, but is caught and pushed by Izuma in front of the eye, so he can be killed. But by doing this, Izuma is also sacrificing his own life, which Moshio isn't ready to accept, and he goes against Tora's wishes of leaving Izuna to die and rushes towards the monster at an incredible speed, stabbing in the heart at the same time when Jun shows her power of love. They finally emerge from the tears of Satoru, who has now woken up, and they start rejoicing when suddenly, Wushio loses control of his body, and starts getting controlled by the spirit of the beast spear. That's it for this video, make sure to like and subscribe for part 3 and watch this next video on screen.